Hi, this is Neil with Hanover Company. I am the electronic service tech and I handle all the service calls. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about how to troubleshoot the 8160 monitor with the HM864 meter. Now, this is going to be a situation where you're getting a low flow reading on the 8160. That is an error telling you that it's not picking up a flow at all. So, first thing we want to do before we go and start troubleshooting it is verify two things. We want to verify one, that the unit is actually in run with all the boom switches on and does not say hold on the display. Secondly, we want to verify that product is actually coming out. So if you're spraying, if you see spray coming out the nozzles, or if you are knifing in anhydrous, you can just go and raise the rig out of the ground and see if you have vapor coming out. The first thing we can do is actually a pretty simple test. We can check to see if the inputs on the 8160 are working by simply taking the flow and the speed cable, unplugging them, and swapping them. Now, what this test will do is see if the signal from the flow meter goes into the speed port gives us a speed, or if the signal from the speed sensor comes into the flow input gives us a flow. So you can even do this while you're running in the field, and preferably you want to do this when you have something actually flowing through your toolbar. Now after you do this test, the first thing you're going to look for is your rate. If it still says low flow on the rate, that's indicating there's a problem in the 8160 or its cable. Now, if it says low speed, that means that you're getting a signal from your speed sensor and it's going in and reading a flow. Now, to verify this, we can simply go and press the volume key twice and get your volume per minute reading. And there you should definitely get a flow through the speed sensor. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to look at the harness. Now, this is just going to be a simple once over. We want to unplug and plug in every single connector, make sure there's nothing in them, they look clean. If you have any electronic contact cleaner, now's the time to use it. So if you don't see any damage, you don't see any pinches, cut cables, pulled apart cables, uh, all the connections between the cab and the flow meter. There should be at least three, one at the, the controller, one at the flow meter, and one at the hitch. So if you don't see anything there, then we're going to move on to the flow meter. Now, with the flow meter, there's two main tests that we can do with it. Number one, we're going to want to take this off of the toolbar, get it in position so we can see through it, and we're not blocking the light, and just blowing it. You will see the rotor inside of it moving. If it spins freely, that means you don't have any blockages. If it does not, then you're going to want to go and remove these three screws here, open it up, find what's blocking it, and try it again. At this point you want to check the bushings to make sure they're good. If there's any debris under the bushings or if the bushings look like they're wearing, I'd say send it in and we can replace those wearable parts. When you put the unit back together, these three bolts are going to be torqued to 100 inch pounds. Going tighter than that can damage the bushings and the bearings or crush the o-ring. Once we've checked to make sure the rotor is clear, the next thing to do would be to go disconnect the sensor, unscrew the jam nut, and then we can remove the sensor from the body of the flow meter. Now once we're done with this, we can take this back up into the cab plug it directly into the flow cable and perform a test from the 8160. For this test, what you want to do is turn the, the 8160 on, press and hold the set key to get to the calibration menu, scroll through the calibration menu pressing the set key until you get to the flow meter reading. At this point, it's going to say pulses per gallon if you're in the spray application or pulses per pound if you're in the anhydrous application. Either way, you want to bring that calibration number down to 1. Doing this 
will make it a lot easier to perform the test. Hit the rate key to exit, and at this point you're going to need a magnet. So I'm taking this over to the volume, and since I set it to 1, every single pass of the magnet is going to be 1 pound or 1 gallon applied. So as you perform this test, you should see it ticking up on the 8160. Depending on how powerful the magnet is, you might have to get real close, including or even touching the sensor. Now, to even get a better reading, you can go and press the rate key a second time, or sorry, the volume key a second time, and go to the volume per minute setting. Then you can see how many pounds or gallons per minute you are doing when you do this test. Now, what this is good for is you can speed it up and see if you get a higher reading. Slow it down, you get a lower reading. That will somewhat test the accuracy of the sensor. Now, when performing this test, if the sensor fails, you can go and reorder a new one. Now, it's pretty easy to go install, and the part number of this is going to be 363-004-010. Now, you just order one of these from your local dealership, they'll get it sent to you, and you'll be up and running as soon as possible. So we put the sensor back into the flow meter, mount the flow meter back on the toolbar, and hook up all the connections. We're going to want to run it, make sure that we didn't just accidentally fix a problem that could have been a piece of debris that was dislodged when you unplugged it, a cable connection that when you unplugged and replugged them in wasn't an issue, or something along those lines. At this point, we have checked the most common issues with the HM860 flow meter, gone over the harness, and verified that the 8160 console is working. If you're still having issues, I would recommend either replacing the harness or sending in the HM860 flow meter to me at the factory where I can go over it and test it. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions or have anything else you'd like to see in this video, please call or email me. I'm available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m.